we have blue skies this morning. This is a very unusual thing. It has been cloudy and rainy and snowy and all kinds of stuff for a long time now. Hello, Mr. Wild. How are you today? I'm assuming you're a little hungry. Always have to play, don't you? Always with the playing. Always goofing off. Anyhow, uh, I've got to feed... You've chucked your hay bag over the back. I've got to feed horses. Little Annie here. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, but almost as importantly. Hello, Annie. How are you today? This is not bad, but I'm as hungry as that guy. You guys have finished up your hay, which brings me to the topic of hay. We're getting a hay delivery today. And um, that means that I've got to clear out the top of the hay area, the hay loft. So the hay loft lives up here and it's accessed, accessed here. So we go in through here and then up this way. Now there used to be a ladder here, but um, I just ended up climbing up the hay. So let's go up there and have a chat. Oh, ta-da. Okay, so this is the hay room. And right now it's mostly empty. This is a very empty version. And as we saw downstairs, there is a pile of space. So what I need to do is use these hay hooks. If you've never seen these before, these are super handy. They're essentially, uh, they're a good way to get leverage um, and uh, carry these hay bales around. So essentially you sort of hit them in like that, or maybe something more solid like that. And then you can move these things around. Now, we don't have very much left. This is maybe a few weeks worth of hay or so for our current herd. And uh, needs to be taken down because what's coming is about eight and a half tons of hay. Which you guys have helped finance a little bit with the signs and frames purchasing, which has been going fantastically. In fact, we're down, we're down to, we're down to 14 signs left to sell. So this campaign is almost done. And I want to thank all of you for picking one or sometimes two or sometimes three up. Uh, we're just about finished our second run of these signs and uh, for carving and, and putting the stake on and everything. And then they'll be going out into the forest. I'll do a video about that. But Thank you everybody for picking up a sign. One, two, or sometimes three. Very, very helpful. So now when they do bring in the hay, and I'll get a little bit of video of how that goes about, but they're just going to fill this place up, this whole hay loft. And it's very important to keep hay in a location that is out of the weather, it's dry, and not in the sun. The only opening is that window over there, which sometimes I cover up, but most of the time it doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing that's going to get kind of sun bleached is this bit right here, but as you can see, it's been here for a couple of months, maybe a month and a half or so, and barely shows any difference in color. The hay we get is a second cut Timothy and currently runs at a whopping $750 per ton, which sucks. Um, it's expensive. It costs a lot of money to buy hay now. It used to be, I think when I first started, that kind of hay, which is good quality. It's from Washington, so it comes up from the States. And um, it would be uh, 450 or so. So we've gone up 300 minimum. And that's that's a pretty good, that's still a pretty good price uh, in comparison to some places. I got contacted by another one, another hay provider. Young kid, tried to get into the business. I bought some alfalfa from him a while back which was a good price, uh, although some of it was no good, and I did a video about that as well. So I said to back. Uh, but he contacted me at 8.50 a ton for what I usually get, which is, again, a second cut. Timothy, I find this stuff is very good for the horses. They don't leave any lying around. If you've got hay that horses leave on the ground, they don't need it, you might as well just be burning your dollars. So when you spend more, you get better and you save essentially. So say for example, if I bought, 
lower quality hay at 600 or 650 a ton, which I could do that to save money. But when the horses leave, say 10 to 20% of it on the ground, they stomp on it, they don't like it, it's too rough, it's too coarse. Uh, it doesn't taste good, it's full of either maybe mold or dirt, dust, that kind of thing. When you pay less, you get less quality and then they use less. So you end up spending pretty much the same amount, so no matter what. But in this case, the horses will be healthier for this because it's such a good quality hay. And uh, I don't worry about it. I don't worry about them getting colic and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the next thing to do is I need to get most of this. If not, if I can get all of it down into the downstairs, that would be good. I don't think I will. I think I'll get it pretty close, but it'll be good enough to be able to then fit Quite literally, eight and a half tons of hay will fit up here, or should fit up here. That's what we usually get between, yeah, seven and a half and eight tons. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be close. So we'll get back to that when we uh, when they're here, which will be, I think, in a few hours. Probably worth noting that each one of these bales weighs anywhere between 110 and 130 pounds. On average about 120, so they're kind of heavy. So there is a bit of rhyme and reason to doing this. And one of the first things I think about is where are the knots? Because when you go to cut off these strings, you want to be able to pull them out and the knots get caught on the hay due to the sheer amount of friction. Now I don't want to fill up this part here because this is where I'm dropping everything down. So I just bring everything out this way and stack it. <laughs> but let's go feed some horses first. We'll get this half bale done. I can fill that in as well and start over here for new bales. Good morning, Gracie. How's it going? Do you need a scritchy scratch of any sorts? Says you smell kind of hay like. Hello. Yeah, always up for scratches, aren't you? There you go. <laughs> and a shake. Okay, let's get your food. We've got a whole wagon full here. And uh, I think some people ask, well, how do you go about feeding? So this is it. Especially in the winter time when it's all muddy and stuff. Because coming down here with the cart and the snow and the ice and stuff is just a pain. So the gator is my main tool. Come on. And she'll come along while I, <laughs> while I replace her hay bag. Go. Oh, that 
keep that up. It'll be covered in here before no time. All right, next horse is okay. Over to Yoka, who um, usually has an abundance of hay left over, but uh, I sort of just let's see how much we got. Well, it's not too bad actually, <laughs> but I'll replace it anyways. Hello. Yoka's shedding like mad. Look at that. Whew. All right, moving on. You need a solid brushings, girl. Or just a lot of rolling. Luke's calling out. Let's go get him. He usually calls out when I come down here. He's one of three horses that use their voice an awful lot. Next bag. And sometimes Ronnie does too. Well, mostly it's Luke. And there you go. Hello. Okay. All fed. Later, buddy. Huh. Last horse. Oh, Ronnie's calling out too. I can hear him. Hello, Ronnie. Let's go, cool, man. <laughs> so just hurry up and feed me. <sighs> Such a beautiful morning. Love the forest. Such a nice, peaceful place. You want to come in? Alright, come here. Come on. Alright, buddy, well. There you go. Oh, that was a big horse today. Alright, that's that. Okay. All done. I did the first three horses before these guys. Look at this forest. Just a gorgeous day today. We're really lucky. It's supposed to actually rain this morning, but there's not a cloud in the sky. Okay, let's get back up to the top and get ready for those hay guys. Okay, we're back. So when you see me next, this will be full. The top will be empty and we'll be ready for the hay guys. And that is a mostly empty hay room. I just left seven up here because they couldn't quite fit down. And those will go first when bring down hay from up here. So, let's go back downstairs. And that is that. We are finished inside of the hay loft and hay room. Now just go wait for the hay guys to get here, which I think is about an hour or so. 
it's hard work. I can't believe that they do this for a living. That's just not my, not my thing. Anyhow, so it's a beautiful day. We're gonna get on with some stuff around this joint and I'll be back when they get back and we'll talk a little bit more about some hay. Well, the hay guys are here and uh, the deer are over here and I've caught the attention of one of them. And there's another one lying down over there. I'm unsure of where the other two went. And this one was quite alert at first. And now it's just watching closely, <laughs> obviously. Like if I were to read this deer a little bit, say its ears are kind of floppy and down and back kind of idea. Its eyes are not wide, wide open. It's still chewing. Oops, see I'm crackling now, so I'm making a bit of noise. But uh, overall, pretty chill. So this is eight and a half tons of hay. We're talking 16 to 17,000 pounds of grass, essentially. This is all a Timothy uh, with a tiny bit of alfalfa in it, from my understanding. I can't, there's not very much of it, so I can't really find it too well, but it's in here. So it's mostly Timothy with a little bit of alfalfa, which is good. Talk to my hay guy about uh, the test results, and it turns out the tests came back pretty good. We've got good sugars, we've got good proteins, there's no problem with that. I might make a video about talking about how test results kind of come about what is ideal, what is too much, and what is too little. A lot of the uh, low sugar haze have been kind of mm, pushed out quite a bit uh, by people that are heavy into the laminitis and founder uh, subjects and uh, insulin problems with horses. And while I agree with a lot of the science that is behind it, I do think that there is uh, a lot of, when we start talking about laminitis and founder, there's a lot of responsibility that comes down to the owners, understanding how laminitis happens, founder happens, doesn't just happen with food, it happens almost always, uh, not completely, but it's kind of like, you know, when you've got, uh, you're putting the straws on the camel's back and there's just enough straws and then it breaks. That's, that's kind of where it goes and it starts with um, trimming. It starts with making sure that their feet are taken care of. So that's a whole other topic altogether. I've talked about hooves a million times, but I'm really, really quite happy with, with what has been brought in. Um, so 6,000 bucks worth of stuff. While I was waiting for these hay guys to come, speaking of that, I managed to get to the post office and send out all of the frames and the little diorama that I put up for a giveaway. So everybody who's getting a frame, you're getting three pictures in there. Uh, you get to choose whichever picture you want to put in that frame and stick it up. Thank you very much. Each one of those frames or the signs that are going out, we're going to be doing those uh, in the ground pretty soon. Got a whole pile. In fact, the second load is bigger than the first load. So thank you, everybody. We are down to our last 14 signs to sell. I'm doing a total of 59. Um, that is, uh, it's a lot of signs for one. Uh, it's gonna take up a lot of space out in the forest, but it's, sort of, it's a funny number because it's the age that my mom made it to and she is the very first sign that is here. So she is the 60th sign, the year she almost made it to. So we've got 14 left. And I think that for me, uh, doing this, that has a good meaningful sort of feeling to doing it. So I can't wait till those are all out. Each one of those signs purchases uh, about two thirds of a bale. I guess we could say each one of these bales is about 45 bucks, um, 50 bucks, maybe they're 120 pounds a piece. So it does help out quite a bit. So thank you everybody who got frames and signs. I was also able to check out the deer and over on the second channel, I put an answer as to what do the deer do? What do the horses do when they see each other? And uh, the simple answer is not much, but I got some video of that. So maybe you guys enjoy that. Link will be in the description below. And I also was able to kind of approach them a little bit closer and give you guys a bit of a close up. So enjoy a little bit of that. So a common question that I get is how long will this last? Well, eight and a half tons will probably take us a few months to burn through till I got to order up some more. So it's going to go quite a ways. We're going to get into sort of early summer, which is actually a funny time to get hay because they're just, they're growing it and maybe the first cut comes out, 
but we're not a fan of first cuts around here. It's a little bit rough. We like the second cut, which is why I always get second cut. Timothy. Uh, so I'm hoping, and according to my hay supplier, he will have supply, um, but I'm hoping there will be a good supply come mm, probably June. What are we looking at? We're in March now, so April, May, yeah, about June. June is probably when I'm going to get my next order in. And he also says the prices should stay about the same. Farmers have kind of reached their peak. So thank goodness. Maybe it'll come down a little bit next year. We'll see what happens because there are a lot of farmers supposedly that still have a bunch left in their barns because they can't sell it for the super high price that they're trying to sell it at. Anyhow, that's it for this one. That's a whole bunch of stuff I thought I would include in this. Getting hay, how much it costs, how much we take in, how long it takes to go through, all the little frames and signs of what those contribute to this. The deer and um, yeah, it's just a fantastic day. We've had some great weather. The, uh, the sun has been shining for a bit. We're getting a bit of cloud now. And all the horses are very peaceful. And the snow is melting. So it's fantastic. So I'm going to try to get out and about with the horses. It's been a very, very, very busy uh, morning and afternoon. So I'm taking a short break with a coffee. And then out and about I go. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you again with signs and frames. And uh, we've got a few more coming, 14 more, almost done, almost there. And I can't wait to do the next video. I'm gonna try to get kind of creative when I get those signs into the ground again, because I know everybody enjoyed the last one. It was fun to do too. So that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one.